you watched the fights last night, right, in Japan, I'm assuming? Well, I watched them this morning, but yeah. Yes, obviously. You didn't watch them last night. I, I didn't either. I, I didn't wait to find a stream, even though some people were sending me streams. Uh, I just didn't care to stay up. Um, let's talk about Kozy Tanaka's fight first, because obviously his fight was more of a tune-up uh, against, oh my god, I mean... Gary, this is going to be rough on this name pronunciation here. Wulan Talahazi, I believe is how you pronounce his name, that uh, fought Kozy Tanaka. And Tanaka demolished him in three rounds. I mean, this wasn't even close. Like, I knew this was going to be a tune-up, and it was. And, I mean, the second Tanaka sorry, like, going into second and third gear in like about the last 15, 30 seconds of the second round. I knew it wasn't going to last long and then it ended in the next round. I mean, there's not much to say here other than Tanaka is fucking amazing. I mean, his boxing technique is perfect for the lower weight classes. He's a giant for 112, in my opinion. Um, power is undeniable at 112. Again, probably the best boxer in that division as well. Gary, thoughts about Kozy Tanaka's performance here? It was it's what it was supposed to be. It's what you expect from a pound for pound guy in, in a tune up fight, right? I mean, there's not much to say about it. That that was it like a double or a triple uppercut he finished him with. It was, I mean, the knockout was spectacular. I think um, I think it was a double uppercut. It it might have been like that forty five degree angle, like shovel yeah. hook to a degree, but it in my opinion that was uppercuts. <laughs> yeah, and it was and it was picture perfect, and, and it, it put him out. And uh, I forgot about that. I mean, and the performance was like we we talked about guys like Charlo, Terrence Crawford who were playing with their food a little bit. Tanaka didn't do that. He went in there and just met an overmatched opponent. So kudos for him for doing that. Again, it shows why he's pound for pound. But outside of that, he's a great fighter, which we already knew. It didn't show much because of who he was fighting. Any thoughts? I mean, obviously we have Julio Cesar Martinez fighting most likely on the Mikey Garcia undercard. Any way we can. Just get that fight next. Is that a possibility? Do you think the A, it's a possibility? Because, I mean, it, do you think it's realistic? And B, preliminary prediction and sort of like breakdown on Tanaka Martinez. It, unless they can do it in Japan. Like, um, I don't see it happening. And, and like, Martinez, I don't know. I guess the money would have to be right. There's not a ton of money for him on this side. Maybe they can do it. I, 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 like, you do get surprised in, in the small weight classes because if you want to make a lot of money, you got to make the big fights. Mm -hmm. So maybe you'll get it. And also in the low weight classes, a lot of money, air quotes, is very different than other weight of, classes. Right. <laughs> I mean, Hickey Butler, I, I mean, famously gave up his belt, I want to say two or three years ago, because the purse bid was like $30,000 <laughs> for his towel fight. And he was like, no, I'm just going to give him my belt. I don't want to fight for 30 grand. I'm, I'm a champion. I deserve more than that. Um, so a, a lot of money is, you know, low six figures. These guys like Roman Gonzalez, Sirkats or Rungsby Estrada. Look at all the purses they were making or still are making. They're not cracking seven figures ever. No, ever. Which is why I'm wondering, it, and he probably didn't, if Michael Carbajal ever made seven figures in today's dollars or Ricardo Lopez. Because those would be the only two guys I could see ever having a chance to do that. Um, Maybe but, Santiago might know that. I know he's listening on the line. Um, it's doubtful. I mean, because we live in an age where money and exposure for the uh, lower classes is at its greatest point. Yeah. So to imagine, you know, guys of 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago at the flyweight or bantamweight weight classes making money, I mean, it must have been significantly less, even with inflation, you know, calculated in, than today's standard. It has to be. Because these guys are actually getting, like, U.S. exposure. That Like, that didn't happen most of the time 10 years ago, even. Right. No, I can't see it. Oh, actually, then Santiago is saying uh, Michael uh, Caballero uh, was the first uh, flyweight to uh, earn $1 million Versus Gonzalez. There you go. Okay. I bet you get the occasional Japanese fighter that makes a million in the lower weight class. Like Inoue, I bet you know he was making seven figures with Japanese TV money. If he was making seven 
figures, why would he come over to the U.S. and fight on uh, Superfly? Because he can get seven figures from both countries now. But that would be on at what time? I mean, you- doesn't matter. You finesse okay. both. You finesse both markets. It's the same as like Tyson Fury, to a degree. Like Tyson Fury's finessing Sky and BT while he's fighting in the U.S. predominantly right now. He's still making a lot of money from UK TV rights. He is. Um, so I think there is, maybe he's not making as much if he was main eventing and headlining over there, but he's still making a huge percentage of his paycheck from UK TV. Same with, I would assume, guys like Murad, who've come over here at times and fought in the US. He's still getting watched by 10 million plus people in Japan. He's making money over there still. It may not be as much if he was there fighting, but it's still a significant amount of his purse. Then... Cintron was uh, is signed with Bob Arum, right? Sorry, repeat that. Uh, Cintron. Well, well, we'll get to that. We'll get I don't. To that. I don't know if he was signed with Bob Arum, to be honest. I thought he was. I don't know why I thought that. I just thought Cintron well, was Puerto, Bob. Arum. He's Puerto Rican. I mean, it's 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 it, an assumption. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like Emmanuel Rodriguez all over again. <laughs> in Santiago faction, is Cintron signed with Top Rank? I, he's, he's been fight, he's been fighting on Telemundo lately, so I don't I don't think so. Okay, I doubt it to be honest. Um, and also, I will say this: I'm pretty sure Boxrec has the wrong picture of him. Right? Have you looked uh, on him on Boxrec? Go on Boxrec right now. This this guy that they have on the picture for Javier Centron is not Javier Centron. <laughs> Am I the only one that's been noticing this? I got I got a text Gray Johnson about this and be like, yo. <laughs> Who's this guy that you have there <laughs> for Javi, man? Because it's not him at all. That does not look like him. No, it's not him. It's not. Oh, uh, is it him uh, in uh, uh, 11th grade? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, that doesn't look like him. But I- hold, on, hold on. Let me show the people. This is not him. Okay. I, I promise you guys. Watch the fight, uh, which you can find on our community tab on YouTube, by the way. Um, But yeah, I... I that's that's not Javier Centron. Javier Centron looks nothing like that. Like like he looks like he could be the vanilla guy to a sitcom on ABC. <laughs> not Google, a, <laughs> Google Javier Centron. Just put his name in Google real quick and, and look it up really fast. Okay, hold he's on. Standing in front of a top rank sign. <laughs> I, I don't know if that means he's with top rank or he just fought on a top rank card. But I know that he was associated at some point. At what? least on a top rank card. Could uh, could he have been with like a developmental deal in some Maybe. aspect? Maybe you're right. He is in front of a top rank deal. I, I, w- I would not be surprised if there's some if there was some either option on him to some degree. Okay, guys, hold on. Here, I'm I'm gonna do a side by side here, really quickly, of of this shit because this is not the same person, guys. I swear to God. This is important, okay? It's New Year's Eve. Like, SSB in the chat says, damn, y'all never take days off. We don't. And it's for topics like this, okay? I don't know. Man. It might be like his sophomore picture in high school. I, I don't know. Like, he's got the okay. same dimple in his chin. It, it certainly doesn't look like him, but I don't know. Maybe it's a picture from him when he was in middle school. I don't know. Ooh, I can see it now. But he looks so different in the fight. He looks so different. In the fight, it looked like a doppelganger. <laughs> okay. When we get to the fight, I now have a theory. It wasn't the real Centron. Plot twist, guys. Did you like the fight? I really liked the fight. Let's just get to that one. Cause, um, but first, let's... Ah, let's, oh, fuck it. Let's get to it. Ioka Centron was a great last fight of the year. It wasn't a fight of the year contender, in my opinion, but it was a really good fight. Ioka just... Like, old man him in a way. Like... He never let Centron get on the outside because Centron had a significant height and reach advantage. Significant, Gary. And honestly, it was it was apparent really fast within the fight that he didn't have an inside game. He couldn't shorten up his shots and his combinations, really. Sayoka just cut him off, stepped on the inside of his jab, and constantly battered him with, with, uh, with body shots, with his own jab, and just... 
outdid him in almost every capacity and didn't overexert himself to a degree. So he never tired out. Um, and Centron was always playing catch up. I, I really liked this fight. It was a fight where I thought Centron showed me enough at, you know, 11 and 0 that I think he still has a future. I'm not going to write this guy off at, right now as like an untested prospect who fought a really good fighter in Ioka. But he definitely has flaws and complete holes in his game that these top guys will absolutely take advantage of, like Ioka did. Um, Gary, your thoughts on this fight? I would. It was. It was a really good fight. I would say it was a great fight. Um, it looked like uh, Cintron was just going to outbox him from the beginning. Uh, but like I gave the first three or four rounds. To, really. Uh, to Cintron. Really. Yeah. I thought Centron was boxing beautifully from the start. Uh, he, when he was first, I thought he, he was landing with the with the jab in the right hand. Uh, I thought he was using all corners of the ring perfectly. I, I thought he fought as well as he could have fought, except Ioka's better. And then Ioka finally got to him. But I, yeah, I had him. I had it seven to five, just like the judges had it. But I gave the first four really? rounds. I think it was four. It was at least the first three. I think it was the first four. I gave all to Cintron. And then I had, uh, from the ninth round on, the fight was pretty one-sided. It was one of those things, like when you watch uh, the NCAA tournament and, like, mm-hmm. the 15 seed gets up 15 points on the two seed and then, like, the two seed just comes back systematically. It's like, it's a race against the clock. Like, that's how my scorecard was. Like, I had really? Ioka coming back, but he had to win every single round going away to win the fight because like, I thought he lost the first four. And he did, and he did emphatically. I thought there was times in the last tenth, eleventh round that he may stop him. Um, it's just like Cintron c- couldn't do any better. Like that was Cintron's game plan. I-, I think he fought the way he wanted to fight. I think he followed the blueprint. Except Ioka still has a lot left, and it was a really good year for Ioka. He's got that one over Cintron and a stoppage victory over um, Palikte. That- that's a really good year. Like he'll be in my top ten fighters of the year. Um, those are two good wins against two young, two young lions. Now, Centron's not a knockout artist like Palikte, but you can see that there's a lot of skill. He's he's going to give a lot of guys yeah. a lot of problems in that weight class. Um, he's if, only 24. If he develops an inside game, he is somebody to watch because his size, his reach, his boxing ability on the outside. You add some like roundness to his game with some inside work. He is going to be a tough guy to beat. Um, I. I will say this. I can see why people were, were giving some rounds to Centron because Elka was very conservative with his output at times. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't really throwing 100 punches around, in my opinion. He was. And it, it was. It was like that 50 to 60, but highly efficient, highly accurate. Everything was in bursts. And that made it seem more active and made it seem like it was more volume than it actually was. Um, and I thought Centron, his game, I mean, if you like outside movers, you're going to like that work. But I, I, I thought Ioka was... I, 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 I could see I could honestly see this fight being a 120 scorecard for Ioka, and you can still say it's a competitive fight. Did you really score all the rounds? No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. Okay. I didn't. I, I scored three rounds for uh, Centron. I gave, I want to say, the first to Centron, and there was like two in the middle. It was like the fourth and the sixth i want to say it was the sixth the fifth round was the first round that ioka really really got it going and then i thought centron bounced back nice in the sixth round Mm -hmm. i just thought whoever was first did really well like in the first half of the fight i I thought centron threw first and the only success that ioka had was when he threw first but the problem with like centron he was never really accurate with any of his shots like he never was. Even like when he was able to get Ioka stuck on the outside for brief periods of time, he was never efficient in those periods of time. He was never accurate in those periods of time. And I think there was like this was a moment like he should have had a couple step up fights before he had this moment in this fight. Like it was clear he wasn't ready. Like it was clear like he was pressured mentally, physically very early from Ioka. And he was just, like, the experience factor was too much. The mo- Like, the moment got to Centron to, to a degree. He was way too erratic in his movement. He wouldn't stay down on his punches like he should. Like, he would go back and watch us and said, I should have relaxed. If I was relaxed in this fight, I would have done far better in this fight. Maybe not have won it still, 
but he would have performed far better. He wasn't relaxed. He was nervous, which I can understand. He's 11-0 fighting, I mean, a, top, a, life, yeah. a, a legend and a top five guy right now. Um, I would be nervous for fuck's sake. So, like, of course. Um, I think Cintron, with another two or three years of grooming, so to speak, will come back and be a force in the top five, to be honest. Or in the division higher. I could see that as well. I could see him moving up. I'd like to see him fight Palikta and just watch him snipe each other from long from long range. Um, I, I would favor Palikta in that fight just because he's a much bigger puncher. Again, maybe uh, some more fights in the middle, some more intermediate fights, you know, would would have done Cintron better. But I, I feel like he fought the fight that he was supposed to fight. I thought he executed it. It's just that Ioka was better, right? It's like, how do you stop Kobe Bryant? Man, you really can't. I mean, he's better than you and he's going to beat you. Like, uh, that's it, you know? Like, uh, that's what Centrano was supposed to do. Like, you know, the, the ropes are hot. Stay, stay off the ropes. Keep the jab going. He could have threw the jab a little more, but you can see he was he was broken down. The body shots and the aggression of Ioka finally broke him. And he was trying to run out the clock, except there was too much clock left, and he lost. Uh, and, and plus, he, him being the southpaw, I want to say, and Ioka being the orthodox fighter, his jab wasn't landing to the degree that he wanted it to. And he should have just started throwing the left straight more often. And he didn't for some reason. You know, that, like that's an easy fix. That I feel like that should have happened. I feel like some of it was like a, my, my criticism of, of, my, of Mick Conlon is that like he just throws punches, right? Like there's no game plan. He's just like it's an amateur style. He's just looking to score punches, right? There's no – that's kind of how I felt since Tron was fighting at times. Like he was just – he was throwing off a combination, but there was no purpose on the punches. There was no design. Like he was just trying to score more. There wasn't that, any thought of, I'm going to throw these two punches to set up this third punch that's really going to land and affect him. Right. There was nothing like that. Or this thought of, I'm going to throw this punch or this setup for this many rounds to set up another punch and setup in combination in round six, seven, and eight. A la like Canelo with the right hand to the body. Watch any Canelo fight, especially like Canelo Khan. Go back and watch that fight. I mean, that's a prime example, Canelo Khan. Watch how many times, and count, just watch and count, look at this. How many times Canelo throws the right hand, a long right hand, to the body of Khan? Was it set up a long overhand right in round, was it six or whatever it was? That is to ha- that, like, that is strategic planning, and Cintron doesn't have that. But then again, he's 11-0 and, like you said, 24, 25 years, years old. Like he, he really shouldn't have that yet. Like You need to develop that. Um, and he just hasn't yet. He took a leap in competition level he shouldn't have. Like, this is another, not to the same degree, but this is another Lubin story that I talk about all the time, of a prospect taking a leap up when they shouldn't. And there's some steps that they should have took beforehand to better prepare themselves for that fight. Gary? I mean, I I, I mostly agree with that. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of what I, what I saw. Um, but I, I do think Cintron will be back. Like that, mm-hmm. I mean, he, I just think Ioka is, is is right in the thick of things in that division. Like he's going to be trouble for anyone. I don't know where he goes next. Um, but I, I don't know that there's anyone who I would pick to beat him. Not that no one in the division can beat him because the division is stacked. Mm-hmm. But he's going to have a chance, especially against the long guys. Twice in a row, he showed you how exactly to beat. A tall, long guy. Um, he, he he boxes well. He move, he uses the jail well from the mid range, and then when he gets inside, the, the, the relentlessness and the body attack. He's going to be tough for anyone. I don't care what your style is. He's going to be really tough. Some names that may throw out for him to fight. Okay, now now all, now all of these are realistic. Now all of these. Um, Ricky saying is Rob fired? No, Rob's not fired. I don't know why people would think that. Because he hasn't been on the show in like two weeks. But that's like people are busy. Like Fu hasn't been on the show in like <laughs> months, guys. Fu is still in the group chat. Fu gets all the links to the show. Like people are busy. Like and it's New Year's Eve. Like people are busy. Like and plus I was like, yo, Gary, I'm I am doing a show in a couple of hours. If you're on, you're on. If you're not, it's cool, man. Like most of the time that's just how the show runs. Like I'm busy. Shows get sort of produced in a relatively short fashion. Um, but uh, quickly, uh, some opponents that I could see 
uh, uh, Cintron fight next. Sonny Edwards, Luis Conception. Um, you said Plate. I like Plate. Israel Gonzalez. I think it's a good one. Uh, Pedro Guevara. Uh, Jonas Sultan. McWilliams Arroyo. Andrew Maloney. Like those are all fighters I would love to see him fight next, to be honest. Any of those. Even like guys like Maloney who's undefeated, where like it doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't care. Like Cintron proved in this fight that he's still like he's a top fifteen name. Like we like if I went back and did my rankings, he might slip in the top fifteen even based off of a loss, to be honest. And I think he still slipped in the top fifteen. I'm just looking at the names. Um for a Cintron, they're going to give him uh, on Chaos next. Watch. No, not for loss. They're, they're not going to feed him to Chaos, no. I ran Diaz. I could see that. I'm looking at... Okay, you want to give him Mick Williams a Royal? And what, uh, and, like, yeah. But he'll beat, those, he'll, beat, he'll beat those guys. You yeah, know what that, I'm saying? That, like, that's a good PR versus Andrew PR. Andrew Maloney, for- he'll, beat the, he'll beat him. You think it'd be Andrew Maloney? Yeah, I thought he was good. Like I, I just think Ioke is really good, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I think there's a lot left in the tight at Ioke and Estrada and Rungasai are the two top names in the division, and I don't know that either of them necessarily beat Ioke. I mean, they could, but I think Ioke could definitely beat those guys too. Agreed. Uh, who do you want for Ioke to face next? I mean, the money fight is Chocolatito. Is right. it? Is it still? I would guess so. I mean, if you if you ask the average boxing fan, who's the biggest draw? Who's the biggest name at one fifteen? They're still going to say Chocolate. Too. Who do I want? Est- I, I want either Estrada or Rungvisai. Right? It, is Estrada not surpassed him? Mexican market, DAZN money. I'm just. I'm, I'm just. It's conversation. Yeah. I, okay. I'm going to say yes just because I want that fight. I, I want. The Estrada fight, like that—that's—that's that's such a great fight. That's an amazing inside fight. Does it headline a card though for 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 the zone? Is it a, is it matchroom head headline a matchroom card? I mean, they could, right? You could put that in Japan. You could put that in. I want it in you LA. Could, you could put that in LA, obviously. Uh, I want it in LA because I just want to be credentialed, and I can, I know I'll get credentialed for matchroom and the zone cards. Um, and plus, I mean, if it's Estrada in the forum please the forum is magical for like super flyweight fights put it there please um what's wrong with guy doing man is he just not like doing anything after that loss i think he's living a good life Do you know that uh before well when he fought um uh chocolatito the first time he was still a garbage man yeah yeah i mean i i think he's straight chilling <laughs> This is all found money. Like right. He was hoping to get a regional title, you know, uh, an Asia Pacific kind of, you know, regional belt. Yeah. And like, that was his career goal. He was on people's pound for pound. Was like, he was my fighter of the year for, what was that, 2017? Yeah, people act like he was like Rocky Balboa. No, man, he beat, he, he beat Quadras and got robbed. He was real close with it. That was, yeah. Um, that fight ended early uh, due to a headbutt or something. Is that what happened? It ended. Ooh. It was I'm trying to remember so, what happened with that fight now. That was years. That was years ago. Hold on. But he still had the other name that with all the W's. He wasn't even running beside that. He was still Wasliak Wankakak, or however you say it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like- You're right. Karajas uh, was cut over the left eye from a clash of heads. Uh, Sarah Katz deducted one point under w- WBC's accidental headbutt rule. Oh, wow. They still had that rule back then. What year was that? This was 2014. But by, by the way, <laughs> yo, I know this is Gray Johnson at Box Strike and doing this. Um, they didn't. He didn't say it's not saying a WBC's accidental headbutt rule. It just says WBC's accidental butt rule. <laughs> <laughs> and the immature part of me thinks that's hilarious. <laughs> I gotta say. And quickly, I saw Ricky saying that um, he's about to find out if he has a boy or a girl coming up. Man, salute to you, bro. Ricky Ellis in the chat. Congratulations, man. Anthony Walker just had his kid, guys. So, I mean, everyone's having kids lately. Good. I'm not the only one now. Not um, me. I'm done having kids. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but digressing, 
Uh, Ioka against anyone, man. I know we're probably going to get Yafe and uh, Gonzalez next. Ancajas versus Ioka, I would love that. Ioka versus Estrada, I love that. A- any of those two fights, I would take. That's a unification. Either way, give me that. Um, moving on, unless you have any other points to say about that fight. Gary? Josh Franco. For who? Ioka? Ioka. I mean, sure, that's a tune-up. Oh, Josh Franco is nobody's tune-up. It's not tune-up, but it's definitely not a top five no, fight. I, you know, I agree. He's, I, fighting, I, he's fighting a borderline top 15 guy in Franco. Well, he went up to 118 to, to do the rematch in Trilogy with Negret, but he's coming back down to 115. At 115, he's in the top 15. Yeah, borderline. The top 15 is, I mean, the division is good. Good. The division's really good. Yeah, it's no discredit to him. I'm not, like, just throwing shade at him. It's like, no, that's a good thing. He's a borderline top 15 guy. P- positive, not negative, positive. Gary, relax. Lower the guard. <laughs> Put down the Texas flag. Um, I, Where do you get a lot of Josh Franco's little bu- uh, little brother, Bam Rodriguez? I, I, would ra- I would rather see. I'd rather him see. I'd rather, I'd rather him fight a guy like Andrew Maloney, an undefeated fighter. Franco. Yeah, and, me too. And, and have Ioka have a unification. Like, let's work towards a undisputed champion. And no offense to Centron, even though he was 11-0, he was a good prospect. He was the hometown showcase fight to a degree. To a degree. Not obviously that, but it, it kind of was. Go towards the unification now while you get the next title contender to be built up, whether that be Franco or whoever it may be, Baloney. Other guys out there. And uh, Tanaka, surprisingly, is this the first time Tanaka's ever fought on this New Year's Eve date? No, I think he fought last year on this New Year's Eve card. He didn't? Mm-mm. Did he fight on the Christmas Eve card last year or something like that? Maybe. But I remember why, talking to you last year that why isn't Tanaka fighting? And I think we said he had, he didn't fight the year before that either. So I'm guessing he never has, unless he's like an undercard fighter early in his career. No, he did. He fought in 2016. Not last year, but 2016, he fought Moises Frentis. Oh, Frentis. Fight. That's a good fight. Good yeah. fight. That was on a New Year's Eve card. Um, that was obviously when he was at 108. Uh, he fought in 2015 against Vic early. Saludar. Yeah. Another really good opponent. God, man, his resume is so good. Uh, at 105, and that was New Year's Eve. Yeah, he's fought twice on a New Year's Eve card in Japan. Just, it's just been a few years. Yeah, he, yeah. 2017, 2018. He did. Those oh, three years few. now. Three years now, yeah. 2019, yeah. yeah. Um, not surprised. I mean, if you're like, if you're thinking about it, Japanese boxing is a three-headed dragon right now with Tanaka, Inoue, and Murata. Do you think uh, Tanaka rivals those other two? Like, I feel like the other two are much bigger stars. They are. But he is becoming, he is, he is gaining that momentum to, to be a part of the conversation. He is. Um, As Tim Bradley would say, Murata is huge in China. <laughs> That's right. He said that. Oh, God. <laughs> we got, like, Tim Bradley needs to go, man. Maybe he is. Maybe it's like saying uh, Klitschko is huge in, in uh, Germany. True. I mean. Yeah, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Imagine with no context. It's like. <laughs> This is, this commentator is going, yeah, Klitschko is b- massive in Germany, and you know, thinking, and this is before he's ever big in Germany. Think about that. Like, no, that's not true. He's Ukrainian. It's not right. Um, it'd be like saying Kobe Bryant's big in Japan. It's like, no, it's not true. He's big in China. It's close. Do you get points for being close? It's not horseshoe. I don't know. Um, digressing though. <laughs> Um, also, I want to mention that uh, Jinjiro Shigoko of, uh, in the 105-pound division, who was 4-0, fought Ray Larodo, who was a notable veteran of the division, beat him in the fifth round uh, in KO. I did not see the fight. I know others that have seen the fight and have announced him a new contender uh, for Menothen and knockout CP Freshmart. So look out for a guy named Shigoko. Shigoka. I know I'm butchering that. I apologize. Sincerely. Um, but that's all I have about the Japanese New Year's Eve card. Gary, any other thoughts about it? 
No. Um, again, uh, Tanaka did what he was supposed to do. He took care of an overmatched opponent, outclassed him, outpowered him, and put him away viciously. And then the main event fight was great. Um, I, I, no one in the chat, everyone in the chat agrees with you that maybe he won a couple, maybe he's trying to run a couple of, I gave him the first, I'm pretty sure it was the first four. It was definitely at least the first three. And then I gave him another round. So it had to be the first four because I had him up five. I gave him five rounds. So it was the first four and then the sixth. So I had him up five one on my card. And then I had a clean sweep in the second half of the fight for uh, Ioka. Yeah, it's one of those fights where, not to the same degree, it's not a one-on-one analog, uh, but like Canelo Kovalev, you're like, oh, Kovalev's doing a lot on the outside, he's doing some good work, and all, yeah. of a sudden, all of a sudden you realize, oh, wait, no, he's not winning. <laughs> like, he's doing more, and he kind of looks like he's winning, but he's not, and like, he's not at all. Um, that's Taylor th- versus Chavez, right? And, and yeah. everyone was like, oh, I can't believe they stopped the fight. Like, have you seen the beating? He's, I, he, I know he's probably up on points. Which I don't even know if he was because it was already a knockdown in that round. So that was going to be about a 10 7 round. I don't know if he still wins the fight on points. But he was Max Kellerman. He's, he's, he's winning the fight but losing the story. Like mm-hmm. that was that fight to a 10. It's also kind of the, the story in, in the Canelo uh, Kovala fight too. Where, but I, we found out that Kovala wasn't up on points actually, which was weird. But Canelo was definitely landing the, the, the more meaningful shot. I, I, am, I am so glad we did not get to a decision for that fight. Where me, 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 like us, we're on the live chat going, man, Kolov's like dominating this fight. And it comes out, Canelo, <laughs> unanimous decision. <laughs> I would have lost my shit. Um, but I think like Ioka, Cintron was kind of that to a degree where it was like, oh, Cintron's doing a lot here, but he's not winning the fight. Like this is clearly him reacting to a lot of what Ioka is doing, even though what Ioka is doing doesn't seem like a lot. You know, posturing and fainting is a very subtle thing that happens in boxing, and it's very hard to gauge it on the outside at times. Especially, like, posturing. Like, where you are, how close you are to opponent. There's times where you're watching it, you don't think an opponent's that close to someone, but when you're, when you're in the ring with them, you feel, you feel that pressure mentally. And physically, like you feel like they're that, they're right there suffocating you, and I think to a degree you can tell Cintron was feeling that. Like it reminded me of whenever I've sparred guys that are way better than me, and are just marching me down and like slipping my shots and like beating me up to the body, and I'm doing a lot. I'm throwing a lot of jabs out and moving a lot, and it's not accounting for anything because the the actual damage and effect is being caused by the body shots and the aggression on their part to a degree. Uh.